Luke, what have people been telling you? Well, as we've seen over the last couple of days, uh, we saw arrivals coming from around Mariupol, from uh, down south in Russian-controlled territory. But even the stories that they had to tell us was nothing like what we heard of uh, those coming out of the actual Azovstal steel complex. Five buses arriving yesterday, highly anticipated convoy with uh, over 100 people on board, 69 of them, we were told, from the Azovstal complex. They were pale, uh, almost empty-eyed and extremely frail-looking. Uh, it seems to be quite obvious they were in shock, but uh, don't listen to me. I, I think we can listen to what one of them had to, sp uh, to say to us uh, after their arrival. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. We had some food rations and some cans. We would divide the cans into several parts and eat a small portion. That's what we did for two months. One day the Ukrainian soldiers told us about a storage place where we could get food, but this place was in another part of Azovstal. The next day we left the shelter. We tried to go back and forth. It was really scary. We ran to this storage place under the Russian bombing raids that were falling very close to us. It was the same with water. There was very little. Now, what people are going to be looking at here, the, the, the mood very much is moving towards taking care of these people on a medical level, and not just medical, but psychological. Uh, we were speaking to psychologists who were on hand uh, for the arrival. They were saying that the, the danger was one of uh, uh, a psychological collapse almost, because it's when they get to this safe territory, when they, when they reach safety in Ukrainian-controlled territory, that the pressure comes off, and it's at that point that uh, there can be what they call the state of psychological collapse. So they are being uh, looked after very closely indeed. And Luke, there are, of course, uh, some 200 civilians still trapped uh, in those bunkers underneath the Azovstal steel plant. A huge question mark over their fate right now. A great question mark over their fate indeed. Uh, what people had to say to us was that people didn't understand where, that they, they weren't allowed to leave, that they weren't on lists that had already been prepared to get them out on this humanitarian convoy. Now, the, the Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister, Irina Verashuk, was on hand yesterday. She spoke to the press at length, uh, saying that uh, she was certainly thanking Volodymyr Zelensky for his efforts at putting this ceasefire forward, but also saying that it was proof that a ceasefire and a humanitarian humanitarian corridor could in fact work. That is the major, the major issue moving forward, to try and repeat projects like this, to try and get other people out of Russian-controlled territory where they're trapped, it's specifically uh, in Mariupol, where she said that there were tens of thousands of people uh, still, uh, still stuck uh, in uh, what Russians, remains yeah. of that city. Now, uh, Luke Schrego reporting their live. Thank you very much.